All right, so guys, um, today while we are waiting for Cinch right now because the traffic is pretty bad, uh, what will happen is that we, as usual, we are going to answer questions on digital marketing. And there have been quite a lot of really good questions lately. Um, really excited to have uh, to share it with you guys. Hi, I'm underestimating the amount of time takes to get from the new office. Yeah, come on in. We have already kind of like started. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> nice, no, okay. So guys, um, so there are quite a number of questions here, and some of the questions are such like from here. Some of the questions are like, how does Google My Business help you uh, in digital marketing? How does TikTok help us in digital marketing? How would AI help in digital marketing? There are all sorts of questions that we have collected throughout the week. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any questions by yourself as well on yourself, um, feel free to type those questions in. And yep, and we are very excited to actually share this session with you. So just a quick one. This session um, is with Cinch. Hi. Right. Um, and sorry to keep you guys waiting. <laughs> and one of the key things, one one of the key things while we are doing this is we really want to educate the market about you know what digital marketing can do for your business. And um and at this uh, and at Next Academy, uh, since she's actually the person behind the Next Academy's uh, curriculum for digital marketing, and you know for Cinch herself, she has. I mean, she's a digital marketer. Don't uh, reveal my age. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it's okay. It's all cool. Yeah, and you know what? Um, you know, she was. She also works and consults a lot of uh startups and businesses regionally, and not just that. She she, she used. I mean, but she used to own the company yeah. and start the company as well, right? So she is an entrepreneur, come digital marketer. I think one of the key things is that you would be able to have very. You would be able to gain a lot of insights from her, not just from the marketing perspective, but how marketing can actually impact your business. So really excited to have you. And Thank you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's just get started with the first question. So how does Google My Business help in digital marketing? Um, Hmm, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. Um, if you're a retail business, so uh, I work at a company called Storehub. And uh, Storehub mainly serves uh, people of offline businesses. So mm -hmm. you're talking about cafes, retail yeah. stores, boutiques. And um, Google My Business is really, really key for many of these uh, businesses, especially uh, all these SMEs, because uh, they're offline. And Google My Business actually has like a directions link, link to your website, yep. uh, reviews and all in there. And if and for any of you who've been using Google lately, you will know that Google My Business is the very first thing that pops up. Uh, in terms of SEO, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you're looking for a brand, a branded keyword, your Google My Business profile is the very first thing most people see. And as a result, it's actually really key. In fact, it's not even one of those things where, hey, you know, I can see some ROI from this. No, it's a staple. The same way if you have a business, you obviously start a Facebook page, you have to have a Google My Business profile. Yeah. I think one of the most interesting Google My Business case study I could think of is, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this guy, he actually, his business is actually called Barbecue um, KL. Mm. And literally anyone, I think it's Barbecue, I can't remember what it's called, like Barbecue something KL or I can't remember exactly. But the key thing is it's really generic, like Barbecue Beef KL or something like that. Mm -hmm. And people were Googling and finding him and he's getting a lot insanely, I think he was sharing about 6,000 uh, visits easily just with um, Google My Business. So there are a lot of ways to optimize your Google My Business profile. So if let's say you're you're selling like barbecue mm -hmm. and the name of your shop, you don't want like, oh, barbecue house, right? Too obvious. Yeah. So you're something cool like, oh, like Audrey's like kitchen. Mm -hmm. Then what you can always do is you can like dash like best barbecue KL. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. So like there are other ways to optimize your Google My Business yep. profile. So for instance, like if you're a boutique, you would then put like, oh, uh, fashion accessories for women or something. You keep it short, right? Because you need to keep it short. But yeah, like there are different ways you can optimize it. So, well, I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's go to the next one. So the next one is, how do I always be up to date with all digital marketing trends? Do you have any favorite sites or resources that you can share? Um, I think, I don't know, I think it depends. I don't, like, do you actually, like, follow, actively follow only a handful of people? Not really, right? Um, I follow the search engine journal. Mm, yeah. For SEO. Yeah. So I think there are different segments 
of content we follow. Yeah. Like, um, I'm a huge fan of email marketing, so I'm subscribed to like so many email marketing lists, yeah. copywriting gurus. Um, my inbox is like I can imagine that big bad. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I'm Brian Balfour. Um, mm-hmm. He writes very not as frequently. Um, every I would say six months or so, but yeah. he generates an essay each time. Um, SaaS marketing would be like Andrew Chen. Mm. big for SaaS marketing yeah. Uh, yeah so actually it would really really depend on what you like conversion XL yes. very good technical type content as well yeah so there there's a lot and it kind of depends on what you're looking for um, actually one of the best ways if you want to keep yourself up to date is to go to Google Alerts and put in keywords that you're interested in mm. so those are one of the ways um, to actually uh, find like daily news um, to see what's you know what's happening in the world and yeah that that i mean like you can like follow so medium is huge for yeah. me so i follow specific articles on medium mm-hmm. um and uh every day i i, I pay for mediums <laughs> okay. medium premium costs like five bucks a month it's a really good investment mm-hmm. uh five us dollars and um i follow certain topics um not all of them are marketing related topics obviously mm-hmm. and it just kind of summarizes some of the top posts in each and then i if I'm interested, I dig into some of them more. Um, there are a lot of marketer Slack channels mm-hmm. as well, so I'm a part of a few of them, and uh, they are mostly like you need to apply and all that. But yeah. uh, it's great because other people filter the content for me. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important part. Other people filter the content for you. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, just too many things that's happening and a lot of updates out there. So yeah, if you get a group, you know, just like what Sim say, uh, if you get a group that filters content for you, then go for it. Yeah. All right. So the next one. How does AI help in digital marketing? So, there, there are some, there are quite a bit of tools right out there that you know mentions about AI, like mention about AI. Mm. Like they will, they will be saying that oh, we implement some you know certain level of AI in our tools. Um, I think, um, I think there's like people overgeneralize yeah. what AI is. I, I think nobody understands AI. Yeah. They think like um, if this then that is AI. So yeah. having rules like let's say okay turn off my campaign if like a uh, frequency hits four for instance mm-hmm. that's not AI that's called a rule. Um, I don't think we've actually seen true AI yeah, in digital true. marketing yet. Uh, probably not in the next couple of years. Um, but like where algorithms have gotten way better, I'd say um, Facebook. Mm-hmm. Like back then, you would have to spend a lot of time True. figuring out budgets here and there. Today, there's campaign budget optimization. Half the time, just letting Facebook figure it out to the algorithm usually makes sense and works. Um, I think how it has helped digital marketing is it's gotten a lot of these algorithms smarter, mm-hmm. but they're also harder to beat. So back yeah. then, like Black had SEO worked really well, right? 10 years ago yeah but then today google's algorithm is so smart and so good that black hat is quite instantly penalized yeah so yeah i mean it's i don't think we've seen like a at least not today it's not today maybe in five years there there are quite a number of tools that says that they have ai in them and so on and you know i give it a try and i'm like that's not ai yeah it's not ai yeah so um probably we'll wait a bit um so far i've not seen one that you know really showcases ai not yet at least jericho panda says shout out please like hello hi jericho is it jericho jericho <laughs> i have no idea shit. um so we've got quite a number of people on now like 23 uh victor hi. says hi audrey hi, there are like 22 of you like um alex peggy like oh jimmy Ngu, haha, familiar face so hi everybody um we're kind of just doing like a quick q a about digital marketing and I think some people before this have submitted some questions. Yep. So we're kind of running through some of these questions. But mm-hmm. if you've got any burning questions um, with regards to anything to do with digital marketing, uh, please mm-hmm. feel free to drop a comment. And we will usually prioritize questions that come in on the comments, even though I know Malaysians don't really like to. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Ask questions like, um, hi, Victor. Uh, so there are a bunch of questions here about yeah. back. Uh, no, about how do you write a good caption and what makes a good caption? Mm. Hmm. Uh, I'm assuming, I don't know who asked this, but um, I'm assuming you guys mean like a good caption for an ad? I guess so. Like, let's just say one for an ad, maybe one for, um, let's just start, let's, let's let's start, start with an ad, ad right? Yeah. Um, I think like good copywriting, uh, caption mm-hmm. is 
all about copywriting and good copywriting at the mm -hmm. crux of it is a good understanding of user psychology yep so if you understand your buyer well your customer profile you understand like uh like generally how people think mm -hmm. then that's what's good because what's good for one person might not be good for another person yep. so there are really very few tips and tricks here um like some resources to like good caption writing uh well good copywriting in general mm -hmm. um uh, i really like the book wizards of ads mm -hmm. uh, that was actually really good um use psychology of influence um by robert cialdini is actually mm -hmm. quite excellent. Um, I, have a, I have an ex-colleague and a good friend. Uh, she runs, uh, she's Canadian and she runs a copywriting uh, um, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, her name's Alex Catoni. You can actually just go Google her. Um, she's got really good resources in terms of very, a good copywriting. Nice. Um, and actually, if you want to write like captions for the Malay audience, right? <laughs> I know, right? I know which one you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> See who Facebook ads is quite good. Yeah. But there's this other like ebook. I think you gotta Google this. It's like um Machamana um, what WhatsApp sales or something like that. It's actually quite good, like to learn how to write copy for the Malay market because the Malay market is so different from the English market. Yeah. So I think one of our best performing Malay ads is like the captions like the system post yang paling chun. <laughs> Okay, that totally would not work. And do you need to repeat for... anything three times? Yeah, yeah. We, we usually repeat like bullets and like yeah. very informal. So what's good for A is not good for B, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you have any thoughts on that? I, for me, when I write caption, uh, recently I was just helping a friend to you know write some captions mm. and whatnot, and it was the American market. The first thing I do is that. I actually check out like companies, uh, some of the really good companies like my belly and I, because they have been predominantly targeting um, American Americans, yeah. right? Americans. And so I actually read their copy and I realized that, hey, you know, the way you write over there is a little bit different with the way we write over here, right? And so I actually look at it and I kind of just follow it mm -hmm. as well. So th I mean, that's the way I go about it. So and. And what I do is that I just pay attention to how they actually write and I realize that the first two or three sentences is always a very provocative question. Mm. Right. And that's why I noticed and maybe that's why you know all their ads seems to be very consistent in that manner. Mm. Then I just try to follow it as well. I mean, we do that too uh, for the Malay market mm -hmm. and uh, I would say even the Chinese market. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one of our best performing like ads this was a while back yeah. was like a uh, do you want to be like Ma Yun, like, oh, like Jack Ma? Okay, do you want to be like Jack Ma, right? And like at that time, Jack Ma dominated news a lot, mm -hmm. uh, so like a lot of people would click on Seymour. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that kind of ties into like, the difference between marketing the Chinese market and yep. the English market. So like, one of the things that I kind of realized uh, marketing to Chinese versus English versus Malay markets here mm -hmm. in Malaysia is that. Um, the vernacular speaking markets, which is like Malay and Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, they take up a majority yeah. of the people you can target on Facebook. Yeah. So um, English urban is still very limited. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. Second thing I realized is that they're both driven by cult of personality. Very heavily driven by the cult of personality. This means like effective marketing for these two markets mm -hmm. almost always involves like working with uh, some sort of influencer, working with uh like someone even if they're not like a super big influencer yeah. like really good case studies and testimonials mm. generally help mm. sell in these two markets um and the copywriting styles for both markets are not di not that yeah. different actually it's just different language yeah it's just different languages it's, it's like um they we do long copy versus short copy tests all the time mm -hmm. and uh chinese and malay markets uh, long copy always wins so yeah like um and there's not a lot of chinese content in malaysia mm -hmm. so there's a good opportunity to capture a lot of attention if you do nice nice all right so i you are i hope that answers your question uh let's just go on to the next one so normal asks any tips on how to run digital marketing for a recruitment firm um, lead gen for clients like you're sorry i just wanted to clarify you lead gen looking for clients for your firm are you looking for recruit like are you looking for candidates for your clients see they're two totally different yeah things okay if you can just kind of reply that comment or yeah. we can get to that in a bit 
Yep. So in the meantime, while we wait for Nirma, let's just go to one of these questions here. Um, 36 people. Hi. Uh, okay, so the next one is, should I respond to every negative comment on my social media page or just let them be? Respond. <laughs> yeah, respond. So I think the way you respond, don't fight back. Try to change it around um, in, a, in a more positive manner. I know that there are a lot of keyboard warriors out there who want to attack you left, right and center. Even so if they are not your customer, they will also attack you because maybe they are your competitor. Um, for you mainly is to actually not fight back. Don't use fire to fight with fire. You know, try to you know spray some water on. Don't the be other another side. keyboard warrior. Yeah. Like um. Okay. I okay. I say most definitely, but there are certain times where you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Um. So in the past, like a company I consulted for, they had a customer who, like, felt a little bit wronged, and um, he was very keyboard warrior. He would comment on all of their ads. Like mm -hmm. every single one of them, the exact same comment. Yeah. Um, and in that case, I advocate not replying because you're kind of making it worse. Mm -hmm. So we would just, uh, we had just, we would hide it and then like uh, drop a PM. So we would just see, as long as you can hide it really, really fast. Yeah. Because they're not looking for a response in that case. They're just looking to like yell. Yeah, true. And like uh, you, there's nothing you can do when they're looking to yell. Yeah. Otherwise, like be polite, try to take it offline. Like do not get into a debate on like a comment chain with a customer. Mm -hmm. Like, please don't. And tr also try not to be funny because sometimes if they're really, really pissed off, yeah. funny like will piss them off even further. Very true. So I hope that helps. Um, I think crisis management can, uh, it's really important and can get really tricky. Like there's this particular company, the person was so upset with this company that he actually built a dedicated dedicated oh website that's a bash this company. there are people who do that yeah though. so there are all sorts of people um i think one of the key things is don't you know don't fight back in a way where you're going to piss that person off more because mm. you will always be at the losing end so nirmal responded he's yeah. looking to lead gen for more clients so it's like b2b i guess marketing. so yep. yeah so that means he's looking for more companies mm -hmm. um Okay, digital marketing for a recruitment firm. Okay, uh, I don't know. Like, there's a there are two parts of this for me, right? Yeah. I actually think like um, running pure digital marketing lead gen for uh, recruitment firms on like Facebook or Instagram don't really work. Yeah, like you're much better off like doing a BD route. Yeah, especially if you're looking for bigger companies. So depending on your niche, right? If you're looking for like, if you're looking to target MNC types, mm -hmm. uh, bigger companies, then what you would try to do is to do more BD. So LinkedIn, yeah. uh, I mean, it's flooded everywhere, but still works, like LinkedIn still works. Um, because if you message the right person, they put you in touch with uh, yeah, their hit right recruiters well. or their people department and all that. Yeah. But um, I actually really like what um, WAP has historically done. Mm -hmm. So WAP focuses a lot more on the talent that they bring, uh, then they do the companies. Mm. I think in their early days, that's what they always push for. Mm -hmm. They push for like testimonials of successful hires into companies. Mm -hmm. So they focus a lot on like very content driven marketing and story based marketing mm -hmm. in the early days. And I think today they're still moving in that direction. Uh, for smaller firms, uh, that actually like that actually really really helps. And it's different, right? Because most recruitment uh, firms. Like they, they don't do any marketing. They yeah. don't do any content, any stories whatsoever. So uh, what kind of stood out mm. in that time about like successful placements yeah. uh, of like young talent and they focus on young millennial type talent in like companies, whether it was startups or like MNCs and all of that. Yeah. So there are some like, um, these are some areas you can consider. I'd like to have a more direct answer for you, sorry. <laughs> but um, there are a lot of dependencies. What do you think? Um, one strategy, it really depends on your recruitment agency. Uh, which level are you recruiting for, right? And one strategy that I know some people took was actually going on Job Street and see and check out all the companies that are available over there. And they actually call in and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you this service as well. You can put it on Job Street. Yeah, sure thing. but 
I'm going to give you this service where I'll help you, you know, scout for people as well, mm. right? Um, do you have other roles, right? Um, and they will often look for better roles instead of the normal, you know, admin roles and things like that. So that's one way to actually... So, see, like, these, are, these are like sales strategies, mm. right? I mean, to be frank, there are some, for some things, I think sales strategies work better yep. than like digital marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. um, because, because like uh, recruitment and being a recruitment agency, it's really heavy on um, manpower. Yeah. Like it takes a while to convince someone to sign with you. And as a result, like that, because of that, like uh, approaching more of a sales methodology might be a little bit more effective, I would yeah. say. I hope that answers your question, Numa. But digital marketing works really well for building like um, applicant lead pipeline. Yeah, applicant lead pipeline. Mm, that's True. where it really works. All right, so um, Victor asks, I have a question. Do you think numeric is important for content? Um, so numeric meaning like... For context, not content. Uh, context. Okay, um, I think, I'm not sure if that's a typo, but uh, perhaps like if you can elaborate on your question a little bit more, Victor, then we can are better able to help you. Yep, so you are also asked, I realized that an album post with a cover photo um performs really well what do you think about this um so cover photo of like very specific size 1875 yeah. 1257 and, and three, three photos uh ah okay okay oh. i get it so it looks pretty and then you know pretty. you have one two three yeah, yeah. I, I know i know what you mean yeah um i think it depends on which market segment yeah and um well, what kind of ad you're running, really? Uh, it could work well for you. It could work like really poorly for someone else. Yeah. Uh, I would say just try it anyway. Um, I think we tried it before and it worked better for some segments versus mm -hmm. others. This also indirectly answers um, uh, willing Mrs. Lim. Yep. Um, Is it possible? Also, do ads on Facebook for a Facebook photo album? Uh, yes, you can. But I would recommend that you stick to like three or five photos max. Yeah. Actually, four or five photos max. Like, yeah. like I wouldn't recommend like uploading an album of 32 photos and like yeah. con consistently updating an album of 32 photos. Like, I mean, what's the purpose here? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Mm. Um, yeah. So she also asked if you want to add on mm. more photos. That, that's why later. I uh, talked okay, about okay. that. Fair enough. That's so yeah, so like just like what seems say, um, you know, three to five would be good so that people would not be bombarded with too many things, but being able to focus on the things that you actually want to present to them. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for your answer. I'll try that in my new ad set will update you guys. You're welcome, uh, Victor. All right. So I think we may have one more question. Um, one some time for one more question. So yeah, well, I think do we have one more time for one more question from the audience or from our list? I think um, I if you guys have any questions, just write that in. Uh, we're just gonna answer one more, and then we're just gonna take up one more over here. And yeah, I think, so like your yeah. most burning question now is a good time. Yep. So in the meantime, um, um so like, wanna try this? Sure. Okay, so the question is, how do I increase my followers on IG? I have constantly produced content, but I don't see my followers growing. Mm. I think there's a difference between producing content and growing followers. It's yeah. actually a huge difference. Um, like, um, you, grow, you make content not necessarily for discovery to engage your audience. Yeah. Um, some content will obviously engage your audience and some won't um so actually i met so um a customer of store hub recently mm -hmm. um and he runs like a skin clinic okay. right like a, he's a dermatologist mm -hmm. uh clinic many skin and uh i was really really impressed by his instagram strategy so good so what he did was a few years ago he learned that he wanted to target the malay audience yeah and a few years ago he looked at it he said hey you know the Malay audience is mostly on Instagram. Yeah. So he started creating a lot of content um, on Instagram for for his audience. Mm -hmm. He would use hashtags. Mm -hmm. He would like create um, content that's very education, like uh, like oh um machamana. Uh, so my Malay is really bad. Um, machamana buang jerawat, <laughs> like natural, something like that, right? So how do you get rid of acne? Yeah. 
And uh, and then he hit like this. Uh, he was just creating a lot of content, using a lot of hashtags, mm -hmm. distributing his um, uh, tagging like the people who engage with him, tagging uh, other products and all that, just creating like like engagement on his Instagram page. And then um, one day he hit like pretty uh, like a jackpot with a uh, very very. Um, engaging content that went viral mm -hmm. and then eventually he like his growth tapered a bit again but like about a year plus ago he he realized that hey every time he does this really shitty video post it would get more engagements than a yeah. picture post and he observed other people's um instagram profiles and learned that hey you know so some of these instagram profiles that have videos have more engagement than those without videos mm -hmm. so he started doing like really simple using his macbook like uh, sitting and just recording simple videos uh, for his Instagram profile. And like uh, he started producing more and more videos. Now, like how does that answer like this question, right? Um, producing, the question I have is that are you producing really, really good content that people want? That's number one. Number two, unfortunately, is that I have to ask this. Are you boosting your best performing content? Are you advertising it um, to your target audience? Because that's actually one of the best ways to grow followers. Yeah. Um, are you using the right hashtags, tagging the right people? Um, there are ways, for instance, like if you have customers doing like customer uh, videos with your customers, features with your customers, tagging them so that they then tag other people. Yeah. Now there are, those are some of the ways that you can grow your Instagram followers. If you wanna grow super fast, then obviously you pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I would say, don't pay to get followers. Pay to boost your great, your best content, yep. and get followers from there. Then you get the most relevant type of uh, audiences. What about you, Audrey? Um, I really like what Gary B said, right? Because yeah, there are not not everyone has all the money in the world to actually say boost content and mm. whatnot. And in the early stages, you know, in the story that you gave me, uh, or the story that you shared with us, is that he actually engaged. Mm. with people so in other words this is also what gary b said you actually need to actively go out there right on your i mean on your instagram and engage with people and you know just say hey um how are you or i like your post right why don't you check me out um you know not just that but also really engaging on why you like them and when people read that people also feel the urge to actually um you know come back to you as well there are a lot of really good Instagram bots out there. Actually, you mm. Google Instagram bot, right? And you kind of connect your profile. It's a bit not so kosher. Yeah. But, um, but you can connect your profile and let's say you can say, okay, I want to look at, uh, I want to comment mm -hmm. on any topic that is, and any any post under this hashtag. Yeah. And then it will like drop a comment. I mean, there are some of these methods that if you do it well, yeah, like uh, it is not weird. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yeah. have to be weird. So you can Google like an Instagram bot. There are quite a number of those. And I, I think a friend recently told me about it and how he was trying it out. So I urge yeah. you to give it a shot. And let us know. Please let us yeah. know just how be it worked for though. you. Just be careful because like um, sometimes Instagram bots might actually trigger something and they will let you. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so, so for instance, people. right, don't send like 200 comments a day. Yeah. It's like 10. Yeah. <laughs> like five, you know, like vary it up a bit. Don't go for the most uh, popular mm. keywords. Go for the most relevant keywords. So I think like I've been hit by some Instagram bots in the past. And I yeah. think it's because I post pictures about my dog. Uh, so like one of them, it would say like, uh, hi, any fun things planned this month? Like nice pics, cinchness, follow me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you've got, so these are definitely bots but um they're not too weird and they only came about came when i posted an image or a question about like my dog mm -hmm. my cat so yeah definitely more relevant content yeah and and if you're going to use a bot make sure the questions or the way you interact with people make sure it sounds human don't make it sound very you know bot like because bot like means that when i read it i'll be like oh this is probably a bot i'm not going to follow you right um but if you're going to make it sound more humane right sound like you're actually speaking to me that would be a very different uh different feeling altogether is there any more questions here yeah so there's actually one question about tiktok so we can only really do one question and uh, i'm i'm not sure i'm the most qualified to answer it because i actually have never done any tiktok marketing personally Mm -hmm. um but like what are your thoughts on marketing in tiktok and do you girls have any good experience from it what about you 
So I've You've not, been doing TikTok recently though, right? Not really. Not really. I, I saw tried, a few posts. I tried it just for fun. Not really. It's actually quite a bit of work. Yeah, yeah. So much work. Like, <laughs> everybody I know who's on TikTok is the, the content level of pro- content production is yeah. super high. Yeah. And like in order to engage with it, you have to really, really um invest. Yeah. So <laughs> I was I was talking to my, my aunt yesterday and my aunt she herself she's um she's from the marketing line as well and she was saying you know she was just sharing about her observation on TikTok and she was saying that people on TikTok are people who generally are consumers obviously um who love entertainment who mm. love uh, probably would be very similar to the um you know to entertainment to gossip sort of things right so um by hearing that, right, it really means you also need to think about, you know, what kind of, um, I mean, just for Malaysia, I'm not talking about worldwide, okay? Yeah. Worldwide might be very we, different. we don't really know. <laughs> yeah. I know that in China, it's very different. China, it can go from educational um, posts all the way to people sleeping and people live streaming them mm. sleeping and you have all sorts of people over there. But in Malaysia, what you find, uh, what my aunt found is that a lot of them are mainly still... Um, mainly still there to entertain themselves, which is why you go on TikTok. It's always all about the fun singing, about dating, dancing, singing. Yeah. Like, yeah, entertaining content like like BuzzFeed in the early days. Yeah, so maybe it's not for all sorts of business, um, right? I think, uh, I think in this case, just with like with what I've just told you guys is that this audience group may not be suitable for all the businesses and but if you think that your business could be suited for people who are young he wants to be seen uh, wants to you know love dancing love entertaining themselves and loves to be love to see how other people entertain themselves as well yeah if those are your target market then go for it i think tiktok is particularly appealing for uh, yeah. the young uh the young segment in yeah. fact i would say young and suburban segment mm-hmm. in fact there's a huge suburban population yeah. on it um but like you must always and, and great for consumer marketing yes. right now i think like yeah. excellent for consumer marketing so i know people who have used uh tiktok um worked with content creators on tiktok for product placements and all mm-hmm. that so they've worked more the influencer route yeah. versus direct marketing on uh, tiktok yeah. uh for but I always say this, right? The 18, 19 year olds on TikTok today who can't afford to buy anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in like six years, they will be. Six years. In six <laughs> years, they will be. So it's like Facebook in the early days where mm-hmm. Facebook was primarily just like college kids yeah. who couldn't buy anything anyway. So TikTok is huge for that segment. And uh, I think if you're a consumer brand, uh, if you are able to afford engaging with the influencers on it or able to create um, a cult of personality type of content uh, surrounding a personality, um, TikTok is an excellent um, marketing channel for it. But otherwise, it, like, it doesn't have the kind of sophisticated advertising ability that Facebook currently has or Google currently has. Yeah. Not yet, not yet. No, not yet. Eventually, one day, soon, but not now. So it's just like the early days of Instagram as well, right? Mm. Early days of Insta, like uh, very, very early days of Facebook, but focused more on like, uh, yeah. But Facebook was very like, Facebook was very like, people used to use Facebook as a diary. Yeah. I did this today, but that's what like 18, 19 year olds do, Mm -hmm. right? Isn't that what like a lot of people on TikTok are doing here too? It's um, it's very day to day. So it's, so much to do with the early days and um it'll be interesting to see how it evolves i think yeah uh, but yeah okay so i think um that's pretty much it i don't think we really have extra time for another no question. so we usually do this for like, i think 30 40 minutes yeah and we're hitting that threshold right now all right so i think that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for your time um and really you know tune in for the next one uh do make sure that you follow next academy follow us on facebook Instagram, follow us on everything. That's also how you get um followers. Yes, okay. Uh uh-huh. please please like, please follow, please share this uh post. And you know, do feel free to come by Next Academy and uh check us out, right? And um, you know, every single month since she's here physically, when you get to see her, um to share and looking to, less tired, I hope. <laughs> to share and talk about her experience as well. So I really hope that you guys have an enjoyable time and uh feel free to you know drop by for the next session. I think 
the next event is already up on Facebook, so make sure that March. you actually, yeah, it's in March. The next one is in March, so make sure that you RSVP for it, and I'll see you there. Bye. Bye.